<laughs> All, right. All right. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself and let me. Oh, know. okay, cool. I'm ready to go. Sharing. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> What's up, y'all? Good good evening. It's like the third part of the day, uh, the latter part of the day. And as you can see, it feels like it for me. Uh, my name is DDA Ponte. Other people know me as DJ. I'm the founder and executive director of Light and Water, um, co-founder of Square Root Academy and founder of another organization called Dreaming Black. Um, I do a lot uh, with mindfulness and stuff like that. But I'm going to go ahead and just jump into it. I know we're starting a bit earlier than I anticipated. Um, how much time do I have Miss Felicia? Just so um, till 7 30. Till 7 30. Okay, cool. About so, 50 minutes or so. Awesome, awesome. And for those of y'all that don't have your uh, cameras on, if y'all want to keep them off, that's totally fine. But if you want to show yourself to, you know, just because I'm showing myself too, I'd greatly appreciate it. You know, I don't like to be like one of the few, but we could be the many. But if not, it's totally fine. Um, let me get something I was working on for you all. Am I able to, will I be able to share my screen and stuff? Yes, I made you a co-host. Okay, perfect. So let me go ahead and we'll just go ahead and get started. I'm really going to do a bunch of talking. So, I mean, obviously I'm the guest speaker, right? I'm, that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, but if you all do have, I'd rather it be more conversational. So as we go along, um, there'll be a, a stopping point because I do want us to practice something. But um, as we go along, if y'all have like any just general or random questions that y'all want to know or ask about, feel free. It's totally fine to do that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen and getting started with what I'd like to talk about with you all today. And let me make sure. So can you all see uh, my Canvas slide? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Cool. So I already introduced myself a little bit. My name is DDA Ponte. Uh, founder of Light and Water, and these are the other organizations I'm also associated with. So for those of you that may be interested in like entrepreneurship, business, um, engineering, mindfulness, mental health, anything like that, um, music and art as well, feel free to stop me and just ask questions regarding that, because those are a lot of my interests and passions um, that I've been able to put into these different organizations. So, but the first, um, I wanted to go ahead and get started with side A. Um, I'm sure some of y'all are probably not familiar with tapes. I don't expect you to be because y'all are probably all too young for that. But they're like side A and side B tapes anyway. Side A, I wanted to start off with talking about um, how a lot about how life's a mystery. This is actually an interesting like just statement for me. I even have it like on, on my arm. Um, but just the mysteries of life and how, and essentially like how, oh wait, do I, can I not do that? And there we go. And how I got here. And so kind of just talking about the events that led me up here to the point of talking to you all. It's all very, very much so true, um, as if I would just like lie, but um, I'll go ahead and get started with how I got here. And like I said, stop me if you all have any questions. So to start off with, not even from California originally. I used to live in Georgia and moved between um, Florida and Georgia a lot as a youth. Moving sucked. I definitely was not a fan of moving at all. If you are a fan of it, I tip my hat off to you. It's over there. Um, but I learned a lot through the process, but a lot of it was, was hard to deal with at the time. I'm not going to lie because, you know, I would come to a place start having a whole lot of friends get cool with a lot of people get indoctrinated as other mama's kids and you know i'm going to get other cook meals and it was great and then you know moving uh to a whole different state it was it was rough but honestly it was way way more so worth it and more so now as an adult because now like i get to go back to these places and have connections i get to do different things i don't got to go back to florida or georgia and feel like a uh like a um, like a tourist, I can go back and feel like I'm home with you know some of my peers that I grew up around with. Um, so Georgia was definitely a fun place to grow up in. It was a lot of people that looked like me, which was nice. A lot of people that sounded like me. I lost my accent now, but I was very very much more country than I am right now, um, if I'm country at all to you. But um, it was a great place to be. A lot of good home energy. A lot of culture out there. It's 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 popping. If you haven't been, I definitely advise you to go. And Florida. Florida was cool too. I met a lot of different people. Out Can there. I ask what part of Georgia? I was gonna say. Oh, I got you. Yeah, so um, I'll give you all the parts. So Georgia, I was in a few different places. I was in DeKalb County. I was in Decatur. 
I was in Stone Mountain. I was in Clayton County, specifically in like Fayetteville. Uh, I went to, last school I went to when I was out there was Lovejoy Middle School. Um, so that was out in Georgia. And then in Florida, I lived in Orlando and I lived in um, West Palm Beach as well, specifically in Lake Worth. Um, so definitely two different cultures. Georgia, way more like live, fresh. Everybody just really was on their toes with their clothes and aesthetics and just how they moved and operated. It was real, just, it was just a vibe. And Florida was different because um, there I got introduced to a whole new set of populations, right? Like I wasn't as used to Latin populations. I wasn't as used to Caribbean populations like that. So when I went to Florida, I was getting asked questions like, oh, what are you? And I'm looking at them crazy like, are you blind? I'm black, like, what are you talking about? But they're like, oh, no, no, what do you mean? Like, where are you from, from? Um, but so when they ask you that, they mean like, where do you like, where is your culture from, right? So like my, par my parents are from the Democratic Republic of, of Congo in Africa. Um, <clears throat> but out there you got like, you got a lot of different Latin populations like Colombians, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, mm -hmm. a lot of Caribbean populations like Jamaicans, Trinidadians, um, in a lot of places from South America. And it wasn't until my senior year of high school that I moved to to California. I hated it when that happened because it was my senior year of high school, but I'm here now and it was done. And I still say and stand by it being very much so worth it. But um, yeah, I was an outside kid as far as like how I grew up. I was outside. I like to be outside and do outside things with my friends. Um, so then I moved to California and now I'm a senior in high school now in Cali. And Really, when I came out here, it was tough because I left everything I known. It was, it was a whole different coast. I'm on a whole new time zone, and like, and I'm a senior in high school, and so like, really, I didn't even know what I wanted to do when I was about to graduate. You know, my parents would ask, "Oh, what do you want to do?" Uh, friends and family would ask, oh, "What do you What are you doing after this?" Um, and I had no idea. Granted, before I came to Cali, though, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't, I wasn't doing, I wasn't the best student in Florida, which was part of the reason for me moving out here. Um, and I wasn't getting the best of grades. It wasn't that I wasn't able to do the work. It wasn't that I was dumb or slow or anything like that. It was more so that I, I was just distracted. I was distracted in a lot of ways by my peers, friends, and just you know different kind of things going on in my life. But when I moved to California, I found out that I was actually quite brilliant because I didn't really know anybody. And I was, you know, you know, I was silly and doing this whole like long distance relationship. So I was like just super focused on school and being this good guy and whatnot. And when I would just put my mind to it, I got like a lot of A's and I did really well for myself. Um, still didn't know what I wanted to do, though, but I knew like, OK, I could figure things out. I'm not I'm not an idiot. I'm smart, actually, if I just put my mind to it and take take my time and, you know, remove a lot of the distractions that normally were, were around me. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm going through, you know, high school, the classes are cool. I'm not thinking too much of it. My first like semester or like quarter was pretty, pretty easy. Uh, I was getting real solid grades in the classes. And um, there was one day, I think I may have, uh, my counselor at the time, she wasn't, she wasn't necessarily black, but this one black counselor, she approached me one day was just talking to me, um, you know, asking me how am I doing, how are my classes, and then she asked to see like what classes I'm, I'm taking or what classes I've been signed up for. And she saw that my classes weren't really that challenging. She thought they were way too easy for me. And she decided to put me in this, this other class, this robotics class. And it literally was her doing that, going out of her way, because mind you, classes had already been picked out, role was already made, you know, we were just getting ready to start classes and, and get ready for the semester. But she looked, she stopped me for some reason. We talked about my, you know, my classes and she was like, nah, let's take, let's try you with these classes that are a bit more challenging and we'll get you like further into college. She also helped me like take college classes before college to start getting credit. But I would say she changed my life. It was a counselor that changed my life. Um, her name was uh, ooh, dang, uh, Frida Clark. Miss Frida Clark. I'm like, dang, I got to know her name. I'm giving it. <laughs> I'm praising her all this much. Um, Frida Clark. So it was her that changed my life. And the class that she put me in was robotics. Now, before this, I had no real like experience with technology on a on an intentional basis. It was more so that. Um, 
you know, I had a phone. I was very interested in my phone and like music and just tech techie things, right? Things that we just may have thought were cool. Sidekick. Well, y'all probably don't know what sidekicks are. Um, yeah, remember sidekicks? <laughs> there were sidekicks. I don't know if y'all know about sidekicks. They were the coolest. Honestly, to this day, I still don't think I've had a cooler like device. Yeah. The sidekick, a sidekick yeah. makes you feel like you were in a, I don't know, futuristic movie. Just tech. yeah. If you don't know what a sidekick is, look it up. I think it was by T-Mobile. Their parents yeah. probably knows. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was robotics, and I, at that time, I didn't really think too much about technology as an opportunity, like as a possibility for you know college. I didn't. I was like, I'm going to college, but if you asked me what I was going to do, I was like, I don't know. It's going to be something in business, though. That was like the only thing I. I knew was that I, I, I wanted to um, start a business. Um, but I took this robotics class and it really was literally on the screen what it says, a new wave of possibility. Because what interested, nah, what fascinated me about it was that I could code, I can code this device, this set of metals, these set of metals that I put together in a way like one may do le uh, uh, Legos, right? And then I can program it to walk, and then I can program it to go over here, and then I can program it to to have a sensor that, you know, when it gets too close to something, turns the other way. I, can, I you know, I can teach it how to do things. I could, you know, really play around with it in ways I had never thought of doing before. And I just thought, like, wow, like I could probably invent some stuff too. Like this is this is technology. This is this is the stuff when we talk about inventions. We actually, you know, that I I personally was thinking. And so I took this robotics class. It really, really was a game changer for me. And it introduced, it was the reason why I decided to, to study engineering. It was the sole reason I got into, um, in, actually why I'm here right now, literally like this one class. And so I, it also got me my first ever internship at UC Davis. So before I actually started at Sac State, um, I had an internship offer at UC Davis to do like programming and that was pretty cool I got to meet some some other really smart folks way smarter than I was so I was learning a lot from them which is which is definitely like an okay thing don't ever think like you need to be the smartest and mm -hmm. excuse me in fact when you're not the smartest that's actually not a bad place to be because you have that means you have a lot of really great resources around you and the thing you need to just work out is how to utilize those resources so you can get that knowledge that you don't have and um, so I did that a lot with, you know, that internship. Uh, but I applied to other colleges. I wanted to go back to Florida, to be honest, but um, the out-of-state tuition was just not popping and I was not able to pay them. My parents were like, nope. And so I stayed here. Um, and <laughs> after that, <laughs> I was going, you know, I was getting ready to graduate. And it wasn't, you know, once I took that robotics class, it, it got to this point where I like, I figured out what I wanted to do. But I cross out do here, right? And the look mama I made it is funny only because my mom had a for I didn't know this until I graduated, but my mom didn't think I was gonna graduate. And it was so funny when she told me this because I was just cracking up. I was like, wow, you look so encouraging this whole time and you really didn't think I was gonna make it. But <laughs> and she, you know, it, it was funny though, she was crying and happy. And I was like, but because in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I had no doubts about me graduating high school. Like this was, you know, that was one of the basics for me. Um, I have yeah. a question. Yeah. How long did it take for you to go to college to get your engineering degree? Uh, like how long like did it take me to get my degree? That was took me six years. Okay. So sometimes, like with certain degrees, it may take uh, a little longer, and depending on the kind of school you go to. I knew a lot of people that if you went to UC Davis, you were likely going to finish your engineering degree in four years because they have like um, quarters. At Sac State, it's a little harder to try to finish in four years because you have you we go by semesters and classes are impacted. So and sometimes classes are not only full, but you also they only offer them one time a year sometimes. So that kind of like forces you to go another year and forces you to go another year. sometimes. Um, so that can be the case with with certain engineering degrees, but you can finish in four. Some people finish earlier if you're like really just grinding and super focused. Um, and for some other folks, it may take um, may take a little longer, depending on your field of uh, study. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, no, thanks for the question. And like I said to, to the rest of the crowd, too, if you have questions, feel free to stop me at any point in time. If I don't see any question or in the chat, please just let me know. Um, but yeah, I wanted to cross out do because what I found like in college and even now, I wasn't, it's not, I'm really big on exploration. So it, it was finding out what I wanted to do. Yes, I wanted to study engineering, but it really turned out to me wanting to explore engineering. Because during my time in college, you know, I, I ended up, I, I graduated with my degree in electrical and electronics engineering. And what that, what we do is a lot of stuff, like thinking about phones, apps, computers, electric cars, solar panels, um, any and most things electric uh, or like high tech is usually going to involve electrical and electronics engineers. And so I explored a lot of the different fields when I was studying at Sac State. Um, I was studying technology and innovation and really ex entertaining entrepreneurship, but I was looking into different fields of study within engineering. And um, I was really, really nerdy about innovation and going to see like who, you know, because at the end of the year, right? So you know how like basketball players and football sports people, they have the championships at the end of, you know, at the end of the league, at the end of the season. In school uh, at Sac State, we have senior design like at the end of the year. And so you go through your whole four or five, six years, and then you get to your last year and they let you pick a project that you want to create. It could be an invention, just something that solves a problem. And so every year, you know, you want to go see who has the best, like who has the best device, who has the best innovation yeah. this year. So that was like my sport. And I would like always go at the end of the year to see like, what would people make and what would people make? And, you know, I was feeling myself, I'm like, all right, that ain't that crazy. That ain't, that ain't that tight. Like, all right, wait till I get to my senior year and watch what I do. Um, and and I, during that time too, like in college, I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of people. I actually started a um, a car dealership with a close friend of mine, like during our sophomore year, just to make like extra money. Um, oh my god! So, yeah, because it was you know trying to do and just study engineering and work like a nine to five like was not really feasible as much. So we needed to find to be creative and find a way that we can make more money in less time so that way we could focus on our books because we didn't want to compromise on our books over time it did compromise my books and i had to like stop doing the business but um for quite some time i was making cool little money like for being in college and not working like crazy hours yeah and so um it was my one of my first peaks and in, pokes into like being an entrepreneur what that takes and looks like um but my senior design project just to let y'all bring y'all to like the you know the um you know, the best showcase, we made a, 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 a brain and muscle controlled robotic arm. So you can think about like Iron Man and how, you know, he can pick up really heavy things with his suit on. Uh, that's a sin. We made just like the arm. We didn't make the suit. We weren't, you know, that techy. But we made we made at least the arm. And you know, if you had this headset on, it would detect like your brain, uh, your brain, um, your brain waves. And um, if you thought up, it would start to raise your arm. If you thought down, it would bring your arm down. And if you squeeze your hand, it would help. Uh, if you squeeze your hand, it would make the motor turn faster to bring up your arm faster. I mean, it was mainly meant for people that had like um, certain muscular uh, deficiencies where they couldn't necessarily they didn't have enough like strength in their arm to really pick mm -hmm. up certain like simple things. So this was meant to like serve as that so it sounded like a cool like sci-fi project but it really was meant to solve like somebody's actual problem like in a rehab center um but yeah sac state was fun i learned a lot and um towards the tail end uh sac state i think this is where we start getting into square root and uh when I was graduating college, right, I was still not necessarily, I can't say that I knew for sure, like, which job I wanted to go into. I had had, oh, I had a bunch of internships, I must say that. Internships are fire, and if you have internships in your, uh, on your resume, jobs are going to, they're going to pick you before they pick the super genius in the class that gets great grades, but has done no projects, doesn't know how to talk to people, doesn't have any job getting experience, who knows if they're even good to work with because they work alone so much kind of thing, right? So you want to, uh, I would recommend internships as a very valuable way to spend your time in college. Also study abroad if you're thinking about going to college, they have opportunities for you to study like in another country, it's amazing. But um, Square Root Academy, we were, before like graduating, I didn't know, 
where I would land specifically. I had an internship at a research facility, like making smart glasses. Um, but I knew that wasn't necessarily what I really, really wanted to do. And so me and some friends over throughout our time, like at Sac State, we we would volunteer a lot and um, educate people on on STEM, on science, tech, engineering and mathematics. We would do like programs for on a weekend. We did uh, this one program called like um, Code for Hood in, in Del Paso. And so we were just doing kind of community work because one thing about the engineering thing that I didn't mention, and it's much, it is much, it shares a similar story with the next side of the story, which is there really weren't a lot of people that looked like myself in engineering at all. Like literally when I graduated, I was probably the only, probably one out of three to five black engineers that graduated. And, and then when you think about women, it's even smaller sometimes because there's, there's a lot of issues there. And so part of part of that reality was why we started Square Root Academy, because we were thinking like, yo, why, why is it that not a lot of people that look like me partake in these programs? Am I just a super nerd and it's just not the speed or are we just not getting exposed to cool things? Because we use technology all the time. I, I haven't met a person that doesn't have like a phone, doesn't like use cars and all, to, all these things that we purchase and consume on a regular basis. And so and these fields make a lot a lot of money like graduating you can make like at minimum 60 sixty thousand dollars just right out the gate just all to you um and they only goes yeah. up from there depending on where you're at so we were like wait this is something that we feel like could help people in our community mm -hmm. um provide like creative capabilities to emerge from young folks that may have not known like oh i could make this thing with this device now that i know how the electricity works now that I know how to code. So it was the teaching of the how and bringing that to community is what we wanted to do because even there were programs like ours, but they weren't free. They were far and out the way. They didn't have instructors that were really good. And I'm really big on like teaching and good teaching. I can't stand bad teachers. I do not like boring instructors. And that's a lot of what I got in school, which was a lot of why I wanted to start the academy because I was like, you can't come and try to teach me with a bad attitude. You can't yeah. try to teach me and be boring. You got to like, you got to, you know, we have to have some fun here. Like we have to, it has to be a good mutual experience, at least for me, that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so with the academy, we, and we wanted to make sure that people had real world experience because learning about just letters and numbers without having an application didn't quite make sense to us. So started Square Root Academy and we started, uh, and <laughs> I, out of nowhere, I found myself teaching and I was like, I ain't never planned to teach like at <laughs> all ever. Right. So I'm like still teaching and I'm like, it's been six years now since we founded it. And um, I've been teaching and I'm like, this is crazy. I never thought about being a teacher at all. Uh, I have another question. I, yeah. What are the ages for the uh, Square Root Academy? Oh, we need fifth through 12th grade. Oh, perfect. Um, fifth through 12th. And then is it free? Do they have to live in a certain place or how does that go? I'm sorry. I'm it's, trying to get uh, my all our programming is free. We usually work within schools. And if it's a pro, if it's um, another org that's looking to work with us directly, it's usually kind of like on a case by case basis. Okay. But, you could, uh, but people would just reach out to, to Square Root Academy directly and um, just, just start a conversation. That's just usually where it starts. It's just talking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we've been doing Square Root Academy for six uh, for six years, and our mission has been to expose more of our, our community to the fundamentals of science, tech, engineering, and math. So we teach people how to code, make websites, how to design, how to solve problems in their community, um, how to make games, lots of different cool and fun things. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, I became a teacher doing, doing Square Root Academy. <laughs> so side B. And so I've been doing Square Academy for you know up to six years. I'm actually um, starting to not teach as much. I'm kind of like retiring from teaching for a little bit from from the academy. So it's it's kind of an interesting time. And now I'm kind of making this transition into um, into more of the mindfulness stuff, which is why we're now going to get into side B. So side B, hey yo, you stressing? This was a question asked to me. <laughs> by my barber, my last barber, because <laughs> as you can see, I have no hair, right? So uh, there was a time where 
in college, I was doing this leadership program called National Society of Black Engineers. And um, so we're, I'm organizing this, this conference. So I'm going to get a haircut, just trying to get fresh, you know. And I'm at the barber shop, you know, it's my barber, he's cool. Um, and we're just joking around, talking as usual. And he starts to cut my hair. And, and then he asks, he's like, hey, yo, are you stressing? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm just like laughing, joking with him. Like, what are you, nah, I don't. And to be quite honest, at the time, I never really thought about stress, like the idea of stress. Like, I had not really known what it was. I heard the term, of course. I knew it from a very general place. I could see if somebody was like stressed out and say, oh, they look stressed out, but it wasn't something that, but I didn't realize the the different layers and levels of that stress had. And so he's cutting my hair. He asked me that question. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, nah. And then he's like, oh, you got a spot. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm thinking he's just joking. And you know, we're at the barber shop. So I'm like, man, I know he has to be joking with me because you don't play like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I come to find out, I look, I'm like, oh snap, I got a spot. And I'm like, I don't know how, why this is happening because I don't feel stress. I don't, I don't really, what, what's going on in my life that may be stressing me out? I have no idea. And um, that's when I started my journey to just even thinking about what stress, what's going on in my mind, what am I doing in my life that's making my body react in certain ways? Um, you know, is anything more like wrong with me? It's just when I started to even ask those kind of questions. Because to be honest, before that, I was just, I was, I was a real active person in the sense, you know, I was doing stuff organizationally. I was, um, got my first dog. I was living, uh, living in my own spot and uh, working a job, starting a business and doing the org stuff and studying engineering. So I didn't think about that stuff as being a stressful, like kind of a lifestyle that I was living at that, that point. I think honestly, I just was like, well, it's just what I need to do to, to live life and do, you know, do the things that I want to do. Um, but that's when I started to like actually look into it. And, you know, so once that started happening, that was the first time I ever started really, I would say like looking for peace because I realized I must not have peace. I must have stress to some degrees that I'm not really realizing. And I needed to understand that. But what a, what I didn't understand was stress. Um, and how in, in my like not understanding of stress, it pointed me towards like, well, I'm, obviously something's going on. Obviously I'm not like in a peaceful state. So let me see, see how I can go about finding that. Um, Cause granted at the time, I don't even know when they teach you about stress in school or how that really comes up. You kind of just go through life. But I found out, yeah, I'm actually like stressing my body out. I may be doing the most right now and I need to like relax. I need to like assess my life. I need to see what's going on. Cause I'm like, yo, this is my hair. This is, this is a big deal. Um, and I'm in college and I'm like, a leader in an organization. So I have to like direct and lead people and have people look at me. So it's like, you know, I have to be real about all these different situations. And so I had to figure out what was the matter and start looking into self care and this whole idea that I was that was very unfamiliar to me. It's like, oh, take care of yourself. How? Calm down. How? Um, You know, go relax and, and just watch your breaths. How? Why? You know, but it was real important for me to do and to start taking serious because I started to realize like, wow, on a physical level, I'm being affected by something I'm not really, I must be like not addressing. So I started to slow down a little bit more. I even st- like told my counselor about some of the things going on in my life. And granted, it wasn't just, it wasn't just school. Obviously there's, there's personal things I have going on with family and friends um, at the time that's, that I'm dealing with. So I talked to a counselor. One of the first things that I actually started to do was journal. Um, journaling was really one of the main things that helped me out and got me through it, it. It was a way for me to put my thoughts down on paper in a way that actually felt like, wow, I took those thoughts and really put them down on paper and now they're there and not like in my head. And that was really helpful. So if you're, if you're a person that's trying to figure out how to deal with certain things mentally, one place I would start off with is journaling and journal freely. And don't be scared to say whatever it is that you're feeling and just keep writing and don't condemn yourself and tie yourself to what you're thinking or feeling or writing at that time. Just get it out. Um, But that was one of the first things that I did. And 
in that process, it was just realizing, you know, um, it was time to switch it up. With big change comes big sacrifices, and I needed to really understand. And it was, and it was like me too. Like I like, I like challenges. I like to put myself through challenges um, in order to like, I don't know, just grow myself in that way. I guess that's just one way I like to try to grow is to put myself through challenging situations. And one thing I wanted to really challenge myself on was how can I be more healthier in my physically and mentally. And so part of that was really me starting to focus in on diet. Um, but then I also got introduced to, to meditation from a friend. But one of the first things I did that was a bit radical is I went 10 days without eating. And this was before I decided, like right as I was deciding to go vegan, because I decided I was like, look, I want to have more energy and I want to have more, I want to be better mentally. I want to have a, a, a happier mind, a healthier mind and a more calm mind. And one of the things that I look at is, you know, energy. Where do, where am I getting my energy? I'm eating a bunch of bad foods. Well, this going to affect my energy and not allow me to get towards my goal. So let me chill on the on the poor eating habits that I have. Let me focus on what's going to give me the best energy. And I realize, oh, well, if I want the most direct energy from the sun, let me eat plants and let me just focus more on like a vegan based diet. So I started off first going 10 days without eating. I just drank water. I don't recommend this. It is not necessarily for everybody at all. Girl, I almost threw up thinking about it. How yeah, did you is, do it? I know it was tough, but it was it's definitely an experience. I'll say that. But I do not recommend that. And y'all are young. Y'all definitely don't need to be not eating for no 10 days. Um, may I ask, why did you um, fast for 10 days? What were you doing? Cleaning your body out, getting it ready? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was basically like, in my mind, I'm like, all right, I'm going vegan. I need to clean my body of all the bad stuff I've been eating for all my 20 plus years of life. Okay. And I'm going to do it in 10 days and I'm going to come better, come back with a cleaner body and now just put like plants in it. So it was a way to like clean out and then now that I now put in just good foods. Um, so that was kind of like the mentality and the thing about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, yeah, I went vegan um, after those 10 days. And another like challenging thing I then did at the time I was dabbling with meditation, like an app a friend told me about just kind of getting interested in it only because I saw like how it helped other people. And I knew I was looking at things specifically for the mind. Um, and so they told me about this 10 day silent meditation retreat. So it's 10 days, no talking at all, no using technology, no reading, no books, no writing. You're just there just meditating for 10 hours a day for 10 days. It's crazy, but it's very, very rewarding. You learn a lot about yourself and it's what taught me about the practice of meditation. Um, and it was really just eye opening because I'm like, wow, this is a free experience. They're housing me and feeding me twice, three times a day for 10 days. Um, and I'm with a bunch of strangers that all are there for the same reason to try to like elevate their, their lives in a different ways mentally. And so we were there learning about the practice, learning how to meditate. But the one thing that really stuck out to me the most is I went and I was, there were 250 people there, right? 250 people in this space. And out of all of them, <laughs> Guess who was the only black dude there? It was me. <laughs> so um, the only chocolate chip, huh? <laughs> only one, the only one, right? And that really shocked me because I was like, dang, this is free. This is something that's like about, you know, I looked at it as, you know, the gym for your mind, right? And I was like, man, why don't like my friends and some of my peers look at this as something seriously, something serious to do. And I knew what it was. Even my mom was like, are you okay? What's the matter? Why are you going to that? She thought I was crazy and like, who would do this? You must be going through stuff. And it wasn't at that time, I was like really good. Like I wasn't really going through anything crazy. It was more so just exploring, right? So um, I did that. People were like looking crazy at it, saying that's only for white people, that's only for Asians, only they do this. And I was like, why? I put up the question like, why? Why is that? There's nothing religious about it. There's nothing weird about it. It's really you just sitting there learning how to watch your breath and that be using that as a way to calm yourself and to focus and to just be more aware of your surroundings and yourself. And I was like, yo, those are all wins for me. Those are all things I wanna be able to do. So if I, even if I was thinking about physically, right? I wanna be able to run faster, jump higher, do whatever, whatever, we'll go to the gym. And this was that version for my mind for me. And so when I went back, I was very inspired and I was like, yo, this cannot be the case anymore. And I decided like, 
I need to go meditate with my friends. So my recommendation to you all is you need to meditate with your friends. And so I started this group of people, uh, my just close friends of mine meeting up every week and, and we would just meditate. I would do a guided meditation. I'd play water sounds in the back and then I'd have like candles and stuff lit up. Um, and I would just, they were just called Sunday meditation sessions. And I was doing that for like, I think a year and a half, two years. Uh, before, is this the next yeah, before I decided to go ahead and make it official and start lighting water. And the real reason I was starting lighting water was to open up this tranquility temple in more of our communities, because I felt like one of the things we need is a place to actually go and exercise this piece. So that was like the first real idea. I wrote a grant for it. I didn't get it. If you don't know what grants are, don't worry about it. Whenever you get older, <laughs> you probably ask about it. But I didn't get that one, but it, I decided I'm going to start lighting water, teach people how to meditate. So when we do have the space, people will then have a space that they can go to and actually exercise their mindfulness, their peace, um, and, their, and to just get away from folks, honestly. So with light and water, our mission is to um, advance wellness in under-resourced communities. And what I really think about that is, think about that in terms of is um, kind of like a download of just, oh man, I wish like I knew if y'all watched like anime, I have a great reference that y'all would probably get, but I don't know that you all do. If y'all watch Dragon Ball Z and like a sensu bean from Goku, y'all get it. But um, what I look at it as is an aid to the community in helping everyone like get better mentally on a more regular basis. Um, Question for y'all, do, let me open, let me do the grid thing, hold on, so I can see y'all, or at least, at least see hands. Have any of y'all um, ever meditated or cracked or journal? Well, I, let me let me not say journal, I feel like most of us have to journal in school at some point. All right, so I see one person has meditated before, the rest of y'all that I can see, okay, I see a hand over there, I see a hand over there. Okay, so some of y'all have practiced meditation before, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, if y'all can just put in the chat, like, how does it make y'all feel after y'all meditate? Like, if y'all want to share that real quick, and I know I only got just a little bit of time. Almost done, let me see. Relaxed, calm, calm. Relaxed, relaxed and calm, yeah. And that's, that's a lot of the times how how it is for a lot of us. Some folks, not not everyone has the same experience and I don't wanna make it seem like everyone should always have the same meditative, meditative experience, but these are some of the typical ways people do feel after just sitting quietly and silently for some time. Um, less stress, empty in a good way, relaxed, free. Love it, love it, love it. Cause yeah, I experience some of these same things um, when I meditate as well. Um, and Part of it for me is like, I look at it, I try to do it on a daily basis because I look at it like I, I do, you know, brushing my teeth, showering, just daily hygiene, right? I wanna make sure my mind is like clean and fresh when I go out, when I step outside. I don't wanna like verbally abuse anyone unintentionally just because I didn't check on myself or I was like in a bad mood and I just needed to go and just kind of chill with myself for a second. So it, it, it helps to do that to avoid certain un, certain situations. And not only that, I don't know, I don't like to talk about it just in this like oh it helps you get better and all that it really helps you like just really be on point i'm i don't think i don't know why it's not like the cool thing to really be like a very um just on point mentally kind of person i feel like sometimes like at least some of my friends would would joke around about oh you think you're so smart or this and that or not and it's like it's cool to really to know how to like work your mind in different ways i find that to be magical to if you can like I don't know, process three things at one time and, and not get like overwhelmed by that. I'm not saying I can do that per se, but there's people that have such capacities and meditation is a way to help you like hone in on that ability to focus, to be sharp and to, um, to just really be calm enough to know that being calm is actually where you want to be in a lot more of the situations than hype. Because when you're hyping overexcited, it's so easy for you to just move and, and act create an accident where the, versus being calm, being more like water, I would say, and a, being able to just kind of see everything for exactly what it is and be able to know what it is you exactly need to do in that situation without like thinking too, too hard about it. But that takes time and patience. 
um, time, patience, and like being calm definitely helps. I'm not saying these things are like the only solutions, the only ways to seek any kind of like peace or seek any what type of ways to get calm. There are plenty of other ways. These are just the ways that I like to focus on only be one of the main reasons because um, you always have your breath with you. Um, Hey, I see someone get the reference. I appreciate you, Kaden. Uh, <laughs> I just saw the, saw the message. Um, but everyone has different ways that they do meditate. One way I do want to share with you all before we go, can we can we do a little meditation? We, got, we still got like some time. Y'all still down for some meditation real quick? I probably won't be like crazy long. All right, cool. So for those of y'all that have not ever meditated, this is really great and always a treat for me because I love, love, love when I get to at least have someone try it out for the first time and just give us an honest uh, feedback on how it was for you. It's not, I don't ever say it like it's supposed to be the same for everyone. Everyone has their own experience and that's totally fine. Um, but if without further ado, and um, I'll try to, I'll, we'll only do it just for a little bit. So if, if folks have questions, I'll definitely give time for questions. Um, but if you're ever in a situation, we'll do a really short one, but this will just be a, a really quick, short way. If you're ever in any stressful situation or if you're just like getting going from, you know, point A to point B, but you need just like a just like a little pit stop to kind of get yourself together real quick. We'll do a little a little meditation for you to take with you to try out um, whenever you're in that situation. So whenever you're in any situation where you need to bring yourself back to you, meaning that you may be a little bit scattered, you may be all over the place, or you may just want to get back into being a little more calm and centered. First thing you're going to do is start by closing your eyes. So what I'd like you all to do is start by closing your eyes. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to say, I'm here. I'm here right now. You can say that silently to yourself. But I'm here. I'm here right now. I'm going to take a deep breath in through my nose. I'm going to take a deep breath out through my nose. I'm going to breathe again through my nose. I'm going to breathe out again through my nose. In through my nose, out through my nose. I am here. I am here right now. And now I'm just going to notice the air as it comes in through my nose. And I'm going to notice as the air leaves my nose. And I'm going to notice this just for 30 seconds. I'm going to take another deep breath in through my nose intentionally. I'm going to breathe out. Now I want you to silently say to yourself one thing you're grateful for in this moment. Now I'd like you to also wish one good thing for somebody you know, or even for a stranger. And I'd like you to lastly say thank you to yourself for making this brief time for yourself. Tell yourself you are awesome. And then go ahead and open your eyes and come out of meditation. So if ever you're in a situation where maybe frazzled or you may be fine and you just want to like get back to relaxing a bit more, start off by closing your eyes. 
reminding yourself of the space that you're in. So that way you can kind of bring a sense of presence and awareness to yourself, meaning just attention. And then start to take deep breaths in and out through your nose. Three times is totally fine. And then for 30 seconds or so, or however much time you have, just watch your breathing happen naturally. Say what you're grateful for. Send out some good energy. And then tell yourself you're amazing. And then open your eyes back up and then get back to whatever you were doing. How's everyone feeling? Good. Good. Tired. Awesome. Tired? <laughs> yeah, meditation will definitely knock you out sometimes. I have definitely fallen asleep during meditation before, so don't feel bad if that ever happens to you. And don't, oh, also, as, as you all practice, I'm going to just imagine and hope that you all are going to start being meditation practitioners, uh, practicing mindfulness every day. Um, but as you practice, don't be hard on yourself. This isn't a thing that you just perfect and you're just perfect at forever. Even if you go to the gym and you develop a physique you're in love with, you still have to go to the gym to maintain whatever it is you're trying to keep. So I look at meditation as happening constantly and I practice it even now, even in the moment, because really meditation for me is just being present in the moment with whatever is happening, just being able to be focused on whatever's going on so right now what's going on is me talking to you all that's all i have going on i'm not thinking about nothing else i'm not worried about or concerned with nothing else there are things going on around me i'm not concerned with any of that i'm just here with you all so anything you're doing if your thing is paying attention right now if your thing later is listening to a song or watching a show or doing your homework and you're thinking about how do i like practice mindfulness where well, you just do that one thing that you're focused on and you just focus and you put your attention and your awareness there. And you realize like in doing that, you start to kind of cultivate a different kind of relationship with the thing that you're doing in, in a deeper way that I feel like connects you. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll be quiet now. I think that's all I had to say. Um, mental health, do it, it's, it's super important. That's what I would say the backbone of our organization is all about is mental health, is strengthening our mental minds and our mental capacities to do many things. We do so through meditation. Um, and my name is D.A. Ponte. If y'all have any questions or anything further beyond this, um, feel free to email me there. But I just want to say thank y'all for y'all time. I really appreciate y'all being here for and spending your, your Thursday in this way and learning in this way. Um, so thank you. And Ms. Felicia and team, Ms. Shakira, thank you so much for having me. That's all. Let me know if y'all got questions. You're welcome and thank you. You know, we love having you all the time. Yes. And you know, this is great. And just learning more about you and what you do for the community. That was awesome. I'm taking notes. Me too. <laughs> I was like, I grew up in Georgia. Oh, I came to California in my senior year. Yeah. Oh my God, I really <laughs> I was a Desby too. And I was um I was I am I mean I was emailing Jalea because remember Jalea was talking about high school and I was like Jalea, what if you had to move in the 12th grade, girl? Right. It's hard. It's yeah, hard. Yeah. Especially yeah. coming to California. I was like, oh my goodness, it was totally it different. It was different. I'm not gonna lie. I thought y'all were different. I'm not gonna lie. It was coming from the south to the to the west. Yeah. Definitely different culturally, culturally a little bit, but that's where I really found out that there are people for you in the places that you go, and it's just like finding those crowds of people that you can. Because I connected with people that felt like Florida and Georgia, and they became my close friends. So uh, finding your tribe where you go. Does anyone have any questions? I do. Why do I have all the questions? Carrie, yeah, just hold on. Do, do do any of the youth have any questions first? You know they're not gonna talk, Felicia. I, I just want to make sure. You know, he gave a lot of good information. He so. did. Okay, go ahead, Shakira. I was just gonna say, do you do you speak another language? Do you speak your native language? I don't. I don't really speak it. I can understand it though. I can understand it pretty fluently. I can't quite speak it fluently um, though. Like okay. when I need to, need to. When I'm talking to talk to my grandma, though, I, it forces me to try harder. Um, okay. Cool. So a little bit. Yes. Yes. Okay. If there's no question. You know, it is a little past seven thirty. But thank you again, and thank you, youth, for staying on and not, you know, yes. <laughs> dropping off. And, yes. And appreciate y'all for listening to my long story. Y'all the great. Y'all the greatest. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, everyone have a great weekend and we'll see you youth on Monday. On Monday. Okay. Oh, thank you. Take care. Right, bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.